Guo Qubi born in 140 BC and passing away due to illness in 117 BC at the young age of 23, left a monumental legacy within the brief span of six years active on the historical stage. Despite his short life, he made profound statements like, how can I return home if the Xiongnu are not yet defeated, achieving the highest accolades in Chinese military history and becoming an immortal legend. The title champion marquis bestowed upon him by Emperor Wu of Han evolved into a synonym for the best, highlighting his unparalleled achievements. Huo Qubing's life story begins under humble circumstances. His mother, Wei Shaar, and his aunt, Wei Zifu, were both singers in the household of the Marquis of Pingya. Wei Shaar became involved with a minor official named Huo Zhongru in Pingyang County and gave birth to Huo Qubing in 140 BC. However, soon after his birth, Huo Zhongru lost contact with Wei Shaar due to the completion of his service term. Thus, Huo Qubing grew up as an illegitimate child, unaware of his father's identity until he later became the general of cavalry and was finally able to recognize his father. A year after Huo Qubing's birth, a significant event occurred that would change his destiny. Emperor Wu of Han, Liu Che, on his way back to the palace after a sacrificial ceremony to his ancestors on the northern plateau, stopped by the Marquis of Pingyang household to visit his elder sister, the Princess of Pingya. Since Emperor Wu of Han and his wife Chen Ajiao had yet to produce an heir, the Princess of Pingyang sought to select some noble women to present to the Emperor, hoping to aid in providing him with offspring. However, Emperor Wu of Han did not take a fancy to any of the noble women presented to him. It was during a meal, when the singers of the Marquis household performed, that he was captivated by Wei Zifu from among the group. Thus, Wei Zifu was chosen in the imperial chariot by the emperor himself and soon after, was brought into the palace by the princess of Pingya. Emperor Wu of Han affection for Wei Zifu grew day by day, and a decade later, she was established as the Empress, elevating the Wei family to great heights. As the nephew of the Empress, Huo Qubing naturally ascended to high society, leading to his future opportunities to lead military expeditions and access abundant resources. Valuing these resources, combined with his exceptional talent, Huo Qubing honed his skills in archery and horsemanship from a young age. Although Emperor Wu of Han wanted to personally teach him the military strategies of his grandson and Wu Qi, Huo Qubing declined, saying he preferred to focus on contemporary strategies rather than study ancient military tactics, a bold stance that was likely unprecedented in history. In 123 BC, with the Xiongnu repeatedly invading Han borders, 17-year-old Huo Qubing was appointed by Emperor Wu of Han as the Piaoyang commander, and followed the great general Wei Qing to strike at the Xiongnu. The title Piaoyang implies valor and swift promotion. The emperor hoped his nephew would gain experience from his brother-in-law's campaign. Unexpectedly, the fearless Huo Qubing, on reaching the battlefield, persuaded Wei Qing to grant him 800 cavalrymen, with whom he launched a surprise attack hundreds of miles deep into Xiongnu territory, directly targeting their stronghold. In this battle, Huo Qubing killed 2,000 enemies and delivered a significant blow to the ancestors and uncles of the Xiongnu, Chan Yu. For his exceptional achievements and twice being acclaimed, Emperor Wu of Han created the title champion Marquis, especially for Huo Qubing, placing him above all other Marquises. This is the origin of why we now refer to the first place as, Champion. Two years later, at the age of 19, Huo Qubing was appointed by Emperor Wu of Han as the General of the Cavalry, launching two military campaigns in the Hexi Corridor during the spring and summer. In the spring campaign, Huo Qubing led 10,000 cavalrymen from Longxi, traversing over the Yinzhi Mountain for six days in a 1,000-mile rapid march through the Hexi region, ultimately battling the royal Xiongnu forces at Gaolansha. There, he annihilated 9,000 enemies, broke through five Xiongnu tribes in succession, stormed the king city of Hongtu, nearly captured the Tanyu Sun, and seized the Xiongnu ritual golden figure used for sky worship. The number of high-ranking Xiongnu officials captured was significant. In the autumn campaign of the same year, although Emperor Wu of Han had initially planned for Huo Qubing and Gongsun Ao to lead separate forces, Gongsun Ao lost his way, causing a delay. Huo Qubing, demonstrating decisive action, penetrated deep into enemy territory, 
crossing the Xiaorouzhi, arrayed his forces at the foot of the Tilian Mountains, and inflicted a crushing defeat on the Xiongnu, killing 30,000, capturing the Xiongnu King Wu, and forcing the surrender of 40,000 troops under King Huanxie, with Han casualties being only a tenth of the Xiongnu. After this battle, the northwest frontier of the Western Han Dynasty hardly saw any Xiongnu incursions. The number of soldiers stationed on the frontier was reduced by half, significantly alleviating the corvée burden on the populace and enabling the Han to control the Hexi Corridor, opening up the route between the Han Dynasty and the western regions. The Xiongnu were compelled to humbly cede territory, losing the Tilian Mountains and the Yanzhi Mountain, and making Mai lose its strategic value. Many ordinary officers who participated in the campaign with Huo Qubing were promoted to high-ranking positions and ennobled, indicating the immense contribution of Huo Qubing to this victory. In 119 BC, at the age of 21, Huo Qubing, alongside his uncle, Wei Qing, led a grand army of 50,000 deep into the northern deserts, aiming for a decisive battle with the main force of the Xiongnu. Due to Huo Qubing's divine military strategy and adeptness at long-range raids and encirclement for annihilation, he carefully selected highly competent soldiers for the campaign and boldly employed Xiongnu individuals, effectively creating what could be considered special forces by today's standards. At the battle's commencement, Huo Qubing employed the tactic of capturing tongues, spies, to learn that the main force of the Xiongnu, Chan Yu was near Weiqing troops. Decisively, Huo Qubing led his forces deep into enemy territory, advancing over 2,000 li to the north and crushing the main force of the left sage king of the Xiongnu. Capitalizing on the victory, his forces pursued the enemy all the way to Lake Baikal, sealing off the regions of Dang Juxu and Xu Dengnin Hanhai, which is today's Lake Baikal in Russia. In this campaign, Huo Qubing once again inflicted heavy casualties on the enemy, killing 70,000 Xiongnu troops at a cost of 3 to 1, significantly diminishing the Xiongnu prestige of nearly a century. From then on, the Xiongnu retreated far north, leaving no royal court south of the desert. One day, the emperor bestowed two bottles of imperial wine on Huo Qubing, who, unwilling to drink alone, shared the wine with his soldiers by pouring it into a river, which was thereafter named Jiuqia. After the war, in recognition of their outstanding military achievements, Emperor Wu of Han established the position of Grand Marshal for both Generalissimo Wei Qing and Titi Jiangjun Huo Qubi. Subsequently, Wei Qing influence waned, while Huo Qubi's prominence continued to rise. In 117 BC, at the young age of 23, Huo Qubing passed away prematurely due to the prolonged hardships and arduous conditions of his military campaigns. The deeply grieved Emperor Wu of Han temporarily halted the campaigns against the Xiongnu and ordered Huo Qubing to be buried in Maoli, with his tomb modeled after the Tilian Mountains to commemorate his extraordinary achievements against the Xiongnu. The Horse Treading on Xiongnu sculpture, crafted by imperial artisans, still resonates today. Moreover, Emperor Wu of Han dispatched iron armored cavalry from the five commanderies of Hexi to form a procession from Chang'an to Huo Qubing tomb. Though Huo Qubing life was brief, he became a model for military leaders for millennia. As a young achiever who famously declared, How can I settle down if the Xiongnu are not yet defeated, his legacy endures. One can only speculate how history might have been rewritten had Huo Qubing not died so young, leaving an indelible mark as an undefeated war deity amidst the lone smoke of the desert and vast sands. If you like this video please like and subscribe more, your support is my motivation to update the video, thank you.